In today's video, we get started on the AMS Alpha 9 Twin Turbo Kit for the Audi R8 and Lamborghini Huracan. Welcome back everyone, this is Joe at Forge where I share my passion for creating, building, and racing high performance vehicles. On this channel I do a lot of how-to guides on custom fabrication, product reviews from the vendors that support our builds, as well as toss in some behind the scenes vlogs to show you guys what goes on here at Forge Performance. So if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. And if this is the type of content that you are interested in, please consider subscribing. Now let's get on to the video. Hey everyone, Joe at Forged. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start the installation of the AMS Alpha 9 twin turbo system for the Audi R8. It also fits on the Lamborghini Huracan. But as you can see here, we have a pair of R8s that we're working on in the shop. Both are going to end up getting the AMS twin turbo system. Uh, we're going to kind of jump ahead just a little bit into the video. We uh, had already removed quite a bit of the OEM components off of the car for the uh, Datsun Sportsman clutch that we put in all of our builds. I know it's not required, but it's one of those things that while you're in there, if you're going to turn the power up later, you have to pretty much remove all this stuff in the turbo kit included again. And you have to take all that stuff off to do the turbo kit in the first place. Just one more step of removing the transmission. So a lot of our customers are opting to have the, the clutch work done and maybe a few other things. There's axles, hubs, uh, diff covers, there's other things that you can do to the factory gearbox just to make it a little bit more reliable. Uh, there's a lot of documentation out there that shows that uh, if you really try to push these things hard, uh, you're going to have problems with the gearbox. And uh, we're actively involved in getting certified with Datsun to become a gearbox uh, assembler for them as well. Something we've been doing for the GTR for well over 10 years now. And uh, we're going to take that expertise to the R8 Huracan platform as well. So we're going to start off with Greg... Uh, removing just the last bits of OEM parts so we already have the bumper, the exhaust, all the little airbox stuff is already out of the way. That's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to jump into the intake manifold work that needs to be done first and we'll go from there. All right, guys, we uh, kind of sped that up for y'all for Greg to remove the intake manifold. Pretty involved, but uh, that's what it looks like once you get it taken apart. So this engine is naturally aspirated and never was intended to be boosted from the factory. So we got to put some check valves in place to make sure that the boost pressure from the manifold doesn't go places that it's not supposed to go. And that's what we're going to be doing next. All right, guys, so first things first, we've uh, removed the intake manifold off of the car, and you can see that. So I'm back over here in our kind of our parts department, and I'm going to be walking the parts over to the car as we need them, just so we don't have a huge mess going on over there in the back of the shop where we're working on the car. So the first two steps we need here are the intake manifold hardware. So once you disassemble the car and you get everything off, you get the intake manifold off, now is the point where we start installing the AMS turbo kit goodies. So as I mentioned previously, this is going to be all the... Uh, the check valves and hoses, the breather, everything that uh, you're gonna install here to make sure that this thing can accept the forced induction application. It even has the uh, clamps and various spacers needed to make sure you install this properly. The other cool thing is these, uh, the in on the intake manifold hardware itself, you have these really nice spacers to reinforce the gasket area to make sure that you, know, you don't have a boost leak issue on the car. And this is something that Alpha is selling on their site kind of as a separate option, but this is included in their kit. And we'll kind of go over this various process on how to get this stuff installed. Uh, we're not gonna be like super detailed on which uh, ports are plugged and which ports have the check valves and whatnot, but you'll get a general idea of what all the work that needs to get done just in the intake manifold area alone before we can even think about installing the rest of the turbo kit.
right guys, what you saw there is everything that needs to happen inside the engine bay underneath the intake manifold. So there's those uh, aluminum alpha spacers that go on the, the intake manifold gasket to kind of reinforce it there. And then there's some check valves that you saw get installed just to basically make sure that the manifold pressure that we're gonna create with the turbo system doesn't back feed into other systems that it's not supposed to. So there's a whole bunch of stuff left in that bag over there that's gonna get it installed underneath the intake manifold itself. So we're gonna move over to the bench where the intake manifold is and show you kind of what goes on there. And then we'll be ready to put that thing back on the engine and move on to the next step. All right, guys, that wraps up what uh, was being done on the intake manifold itself. As you can see, uh, Greg was installing a, a few more check valves on the manifold. And then we also had to go through and replace all these uh, little rubber grommets that you see that were coming off and, re and put that on there and reinforce them with some solid aluminum pieces just to get a better bite on the manifold, I'm assuming. Uh, because this whole manifold is plastic. You can only, uh, you gotta do everything you can to make sure that those seals are gonna stay intact when you put manifold pressure to them. That's one of the biggest reasons as you go up in power, these things require a billet intake manifold, which AMS and a few others have come out with. And uh, we'll be definitely using the AMS one. That thing looks amazing. But uh, the next thing you're gonna see us do is reinstall the intake manifold onto the car. We're gonna make a few modifications to the cooling and oiling system so we can get uh, oil feeds and water feeds to the turbochargers. And then you'll see us install the turbos next, which is starting to get to some of the fun stuff. All right, guys, so we've, we've got the intake manifold on. Everything in that part of the build is pretty much wrapped up. There might be a few other things later on in the instructions. We've kind of read through this thing like three or four times. But the next step is, you see Greg in the background there, lowering off some of the trim panels. And this is where we're going to tap in for the water, for the turbochargers, and the oil drain and for the uh, turbos as well. So we'll watch him do some of that work, and we'll go from there. There's a few things that Greg's gonna do here on the uh, cooling system. So that since these are Garrett GTX turbochargers, uh, we have to add the water cooling ports. And this is the most efficient way to do that on this system. So you remove the thermostat housing and tap into that. And uh, we'll have we'll kind of show you a little bit of what's involved with that. And then we'll next on to tapping in for the oil drains. And then all of the stuff that needs to be done to prep the car for the turbo kit will be done.
All right, guys, so now that we have the coolant mod done to the thermostat housing, next thing you'll see Greg doing in the back here is tapping the oil return for the turbochargers, and we'll just do a quick snippet of that. It's uh, not rocket science on any of this stuff. It just gives you guys an idea of what all is involved. I mean, this all takes quite a bit of time to do and do, do it properly. So we'll uh, get over here onto the tapping of the oil return, and then I think we'll be done for the first segment of this video. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the first installment of the video. Greg's just tightening up a few last minute things and going over our checks. So this first installment pretty much is prepping the car, like I've mentioned already, for the turbo kit installation. So what you're gonna see on the next video is us mounting the turbos and starting to put a lot of the parts on here. So this one is not gonna be the most exciting video, but it kind of shows you a lot of behind the scenes footage of how you need to prep the car so it can handle forced induction because this, like I said, this thing was never intended to be a forced induction engine from Audi. So with that, we'll see you guys on the next video.